Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel. I want to thank everybody for subscribing, for taking their time, their precious time. Nowadays, uh, people are a li little bit stressed in the world and uh, worried about many things. And um, we're looking for ways to cope or ways to relieve stress. Uh, cumulative stress can add a host of many different problems, um, starting from mental and then going down to physical. And uh, it, it could uh, also um, be taxing on us. So uh, nowadays um, it's getting a little bit darker. The winter months come in North America and there's less sun. When there's less sun, then uh, we need to take care of ourselves a little more. We need a little bit more vitamin D and uh, we need a little bit more light. So uh, sometimes people uh, develop uh, things like um, seasonal affective disorder and they feel uh, a little bit sad. Uh, that's why it's called seasonal affective disorder. Um, however, there's other things that can help. So nowadays also we, uh, we can focus on um, not just on our eating habits and resting and exercise, but we can also find fragrances to enjoy. And these are comfort fragrances. And um, I've decided to review today a wonderful fragrance and it's very hyped in the uh, community. And um, I personally myself purchased uh, Baccarat Rouge 540, the, uh, the Parfum version. And uh, it was beautiful and uh I, unfortunately i didn't keep it and um people will say it was likened to uh cotton candy and that's what they kind of focus on they really uh focus on cotton candy and um other uh woody notes since it's another perfume version um it, it's going to uh, rise from the skin and it, it's going to penetrate the receptors of the nose and uh, you will be able to smell it um, very quickly. And um, it, it, uh, it is very, the projection and the sillage is very good on it. Um, today's review though is uh, Baccarat Rouge 540, the extract version. And so I, I just wanted to uh, to talk about that and maybe make a small comparison uh, between the two. So uh, Baccarat Rouge 540 uh, is by Mason Francis Kirchen. I hope I'm saying that right, I apologize if I didn't. And it's an amber floral fragrance for men and women. And it was launched in 2017. The nose behind this uh, was uh, Mr. Kirchen. Top uh, notes are bitter almonds and saffron. Middle notes are Egyptian jasmine and cedar. And the base notes are ambergris woody notes and musk so being that uh, i'll get to the point i'll show you the fragrance and then we can ask ourselves uh, what is what does it smell like what does it smell like because uh, this fragrance is not not cheap it's um not cheap for a specific reason though for a variety of reasons and i'll explain to you why it comes in a beautiful presentation now i unfortunately i uh I bought the original presentation, came with a box, and uh, it was beautiful. It had like a chandelier type um, engraving on the box. It was red, it opened up. I'll post a picture up so you can see what it's like. Um, the cor the uh, So the main accords are, once again, amber, almond, woody, warm, spicy, animalic, nutty, musky, fruity, metallic, and white floral. Um, this here is the bottom. Now, something interesting that you will want to know about this bottle is that apparently the bottle had, uh, to make the bottle, they used gold powder and they used a mix of different chemicals and heated it up to 540 degrees uh, Fahrenheit to achieve the color and pigment of this beautiful rose um, I mean red cherry colored bottle which is absolutely stunning if you could see it again it's 
absolutely beautiful. Um, and the cap is solid, it's, it's pretty heavy. And so uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, this this scent is highly uh, since it's high, since it's highly valued, and uh, it's really sought after. It, it um, and one of the things um, is that, uh, that that I need to mention is that um, people uh, create a lot of fakes, so you gotta watch it on the market to get it from a reputable reputable seller. So I recommend um, like uh, sellers like FragranceX.com. In Canada, you got fragrancebuy.ca, um, Twisted Lily, uh, that's a good one. Um, and uh, well, you got to do some research in regards to the sellers. So um, in regards to this, what does it smell like? Well, I made a couple of notes here. Uh, really, it's a, uh, you got to sometimes think about um, the top notes. So I'm going to spray it. Wonderful sprayer. Wow. So the top notes, so I almost can smell this sweet orange. That's so beautiful. It's the top, the, the top notes will rush up into your uh, olfactory receptors quicker. And uh, what you're going to get here is a mix of a couple of things. Now, people say that you get a caramelized cotton-like candy smell. Now, what you're smelling here is an interplay and a mix of the bitter almond, which is sweet, and the saffron. Now, I'm gonna talk about saffron in a sec. If you, if you allow it to to rise up into your no factory passageways, then you can really gr grasp and start learning to differentiate between the top notes in the middle first notes at first. So uh, you got the Egyptian Jasmine, which is a white floral group. Uh, and uh, the Egyptian Jasmine is sweet. And the cedar kind of stabilizes that sweetness so it doesn't kind of uh, run off on its own and it kind of the cedar kind of takes it like on a little carpet ride you know on this little voyage when you first spray it um, into your nose and across the room and it absolutely is astonishing the siage and projection in this is magnificent it just fills up the room it's a wonderful and eventually after uh, some time it will remain on your skin and it will remain on your clothes even longer. It um, it will sit on uh, on ambergris, wood, and musk. It's kind of like um, sitting on a, a a very 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 stable uh, a very stable canoe that's going down a river, and uh, and bringing these these other notes. Uh, to you and also adding uh, a balance between all of them so it's uh, it's quite wonderful so yeah this is absolutely magnificent and this is why people are creating fakes so uh, regarding this uh, and the mixture of different um, notes it's kind of like uh, the receptors in your eyes well, you have red, blue, and green, and um, those are the main receptors in the eyes. Uh, we don't have uh, all the other colors that we see in the world is a different spectrum, and we don't have uh, those main receptors in our eyes. The main receptors we have are red, blue, and green, and those uh, receptors can, um, can see all other colors by allowing them to mix and creating an experience in our minds. So, so that's what uh, olfactory perception is like. However, you might want to know something quite interesting that I learned. Um, I, used, I do read uh, neuroscience books and uh, uh, there's a condition called synesthesia. And sometimes people, when they see numbers, they see colors. Sometimes people, when they smell certain things, they can feel a texture. 
sometimes people when they taste something they can see a color so this is a mixture of the senses what's happening is that uh, the the brain maps uh, are merging together and creating an experience that's somewhat out of the norm some people have it stronger than others so this is why some people are seeing cotton candy when they <laughs> smell Barbara Rouge. However, it's far from just cotton candy. This right here uh, has ambergris, which is one of the most costly ingredients in the world. Also, saffron is very, very costly. So in regards to, to these notes, I wanted to kind of break down some some information in regards to what saffron is and um, and what ambergris is because of the the high value of it the uh, Egyptian jasmine that's uh, white florals it's sweet um, don't have too much information on that the cedar is pretty basic um, but in regards to uh, to jasmine, uh, one of the things that it does is that it um, improves self-esteem, can be used as an anti-stress uh, and relaxing, uh, eliminates fatigue, muscle tension, and enhances sensuality even. Um, for the metaphysical and healing properties of Egy Egyptian jasmine hands in include creativity, anti-stress, relaxing, fatigue, muscle tension, and once again, sensuality. Uh, so, uh, in regards to um, to saffron, though, it smells very uh, strong. Uh, the saffron is used to mimic uh, leather. It has a soft, earthy, hay-like, reminding uh, slightly. Some people say of rubber, but I don't get that too much. Uh, scent comes from chemical compounds of uh, picrocrosin and saffronal. Now, saffron is often added to perfumes to support leather, like I said, and it is added uh, to perfumer uh, to cooking, and it turns bright yellow when it's added to cooking. You might um, you might think about uh, the uh, the dish, the Spanish dish paella that has um, saffron. It's and people say people know paella, but uh, with they related to this. Uh, this ingredient saffron and how costly it is um, so when you add a touch of this to perfume it gives a bittersweet leathery intimate quality a bit earthy and soft and the pleasurable aspects of it are a honey hay like uh, type smell um, so the prices of these spices are very costly and it's known as red gold <laughs> it's interesting um, Oud is referred to as the crown jewel and it's referred to as liquid gold. Saffron is re uh, referred to as uh, red gold. Um, it's one of the most ancient uh, perfume ingredients and it originated in ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome. But I do believe in ancient Egypt with all those uh, Egyptian queens walking around that uh, they had something to do with it. Um, the ever extravagant Romans even strewed it over the floors of public places to scent the air of special occasions. Saffron was also used in scent baths, houses, and temples, while it's medicine. Um, while in medicine, it was narcotic. Uh, so now I wanted to talk a little bit about ambergris, and. Um, Ambergris is uh, formed in the secretions of the bile duct in the intestines of some sperm whales. It can be found floating on the sea and washed up in the coastlines. It is sometimes found in abdomens of dead sperm whales. Because of the beaks of giant squids have been discovered with thin lumps of ambergris, scientists have theorized that the substance is produced by the whale's gastrointestinal tract to ease the passage of hard, sharp objects that it may have, been, have eaten. Ambergris is passed in the fecal matter, and it is speculated that sometimes if it's too large that it can vomit it out, but this is only speculation. Ambergris takes years to form, and it is called floating gold. Um, and only by an estimated 1% ambergris, uh, only 1% of the, of the whales produce ambergris. 
Ambergris is rare. Once expelled by a whale, it often floats for years, making its landfall. The slim chances of finding ambergris and the legal ambiguity involved led perfume makers away from ambergris and led chemists on a quest to find viable alternatives. So this is where uh, ambroxin comes into play. Chemists, they develop this uh, chemical composition that uh, uh, mimics the, the uh, smell of ambergris. Ambergris is found primarily in the Atlantic Ocean and on the coast of South Africa, Brazil, Madagascar, and the East Indies, the Maldives, China, Japan, India, Australia, New Zealand, and the Molucca Islands. So ambergris is a solid, waxy, flammable substance of dull grayish or blackish color produced in the digestive system of sperm whales and has only it has a marine fecal odor and actually it acquires a sweet earthy scent as it ages and is commonly likened to the fragrance of uh, rubble alcohol with the vaporous chemical astringency it says here it says it's been highly valued by perfume makers and they use it as a fixative that allows the scent to endure much longer although it has been mostly replaced by the ambroxide Dogs are attracted to the smell of ambergris and are sometimes used by ambergris searchers. That's something interesting. Now, in regards to ambergris, I just wanted to share something in regards to the legality, which is quite sad, but we all need to uh, con uh, understand the ethical standards and um, what's going on in the world. Uh, it says ambergris from the 18th to the 19th century, that the whaling industry prospered. By some reports, nearly 50,000 whales, including sperm whales, were killed each year. Throughout the 1800s, millions of whales were killed for their whale, whale bone, and ambergris to fuel profits. They soon became endangered as a species as a result. Due to studies showing that the whale populations were being threatened, the International Whaling Commission instituted a more moratorium on commercial whaling in 1982. Although ambergris is not harvested from whales, many countries also ban the trade of ambergris as part of the more general ban of the hunting and exploitation of whales. Urine, feces, and ambergris that have been naturally excreted by sperm whales are waste products, not considered parts or derivatives of a site species and are therefore not covered by the provision of the convention. So this is one of the things that we need to consider is that uh, how are these companies um, using this valuable resource? How do they attain it? And um, really, how much of it do we get in our fragrances? And um, is it really worth the, the, the cost, right? But that's all, um, that's all uh, personal uh, decision in regards to how we make this spend our money. This is absolutely beautiful though. I uh, rate this a 10 out of 10. Um, it's one of the most complimented fragrances I've ever had. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Everybody I've, that's come into contact with this has loved this. Um, for some reason, uh, some of the ladies in my family like the EVP version. It's possibly because uh, when you first spray this, you get a little bit of that pepper note at first. And um, sometimes uh, in regards to these types of things, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, everybody, is a, uh, everybody has a subjective thought process in regard to how to perceive these fragrances. The conscience is likened to like, uh, it's likened to a flashlight in the darkness. If you light a flashlight in the darkness and you illuminate the area in which you are looking for something, then that will uh, be what is perceived and that it will be heightened in the senses and also in the conscious mind. Whatever your mind attaches to it, whether it's uh, an experience, an image, or uh, any other, uh, any other thing, even even music, uh, is is all attached to to the experience, and all will be heightened. So, uh, in regards to what other people experiences, uh, take it for a grain of salt.
try it out yourself buy a decant because these this one here is especially expensive and it is not cheap i paid 550 canadian uh, retail price so this is an extract of perfume so it's highly concentrated and it is um much uh potent than the uh edp in my opinion and i smell it all day and um, i do not go anosmic to it some people say they do and it could be possibly because of the high amount of natural ingredients here that may sit close to the skin on their uh, on their skin so you got the um the temperature the uh the chemical composition of your skin and the oils interacting with it you got your olfactory receptors and the perception all creating um, an experience so as how you are going to see and um, and like and enjoy the smell so that's my review today on uh, on baccarat rouge 540 ladies and gentlemen and i appreciate uh, you very much and thank you for having me and goodbye